Hi, Arrow. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Absolutely. I got to tell you, right right from the very start here, and it might be a little selfish, but I got to tell you, this is the first book that my wife and I are reading at the same time. And, and, and it creates conversation. And, and, and I know it's, it's for the young adult readers and stuff like that, but no, no. This is an everybody book. That's, that's so special to hear. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. You know, I, I think I'm of the same mindset for you that while these novels are geared toward a young adult audience, there's something universal about it for absolutely everyone. Well, I think what, what you are, you share brilliant stories. And, and I think that's what we grew up with is that I want that story that's going to stick to me. Not one I'm going to say, yeah, I read it. No, I want it to stick to me so I can have a conversation. That, that's so funny. I remember when I was publishing my first novel, I literally had that thought where I was like, I hope that I'm not just someone's quick, plain read that they, you know, consume once and then never think about again. I hope that I'm able to produce something that imprints upon them. So where do you go in order to grow a story like The First to Die in the End? Because, I mean, I, I, I go into my studio and my studio is a very sacred place. Is your writing room the same thing? You know, I have an office at home now, but I write everywhere. I write in my <laughs> living room. I write at my dining table. I write in the park. <laughs> I write in the back of an Uber. Like, I, I will normally always carry my laptop with me, and, and I just write when, whenever I can, to be honest. Oh, my God. You're, you're so me in, in the way that – and I, and what I did was I gave it a label. I said, I stream think. And they go, what do you mean? It, it, it moves through me. I've got to be ready to get to take it from, from the universe and then give it away. A absolutely. No, I, I, I tell people all this time, I was like, if I seem a little distracted, it's because I am talking with you, but I am also – telling the story in my head right now um and i'm just I, and i've been juggling them both maybe it's the gemini in me <laughs> oh my god you're gemini i'm cancer okay see that that says a lot right there it says yeah apparently that means we're friends <laughs> so that's <laughs> To, to be on this subject, you know, like 20, they, they learn 24 hours before the transition or, the, or, or dying. You know, I've, I've talked about that a lot on iHeartRadio, if we had that opportunity. But the thing is, I believe that people would use their wealth to try to get 48 hours and then 72 hours. Man, I mean, what, what's your gut on that? Oh, I 100% agree. You know, there's a little note in the book where you have a little detail in the book where you have – like older, wealthier people who are basically trying to campaign. So like, hey, can I get more of a heads up? Um, and I'm just like, you know, and Jeff Cass is not offering that to people. Like they want it to be an equal opportunity for people across the board. And, uh, and I really appreciate that mentality in the company. And, and you know that readers are going to take this to TikTok and other social media outlets, and they're going to ask questions like that. What would you do? How would you do? And, and what would you learn from it? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and I, I, I'm constantly thinking about that every day myself. Like, what's at least one thing I can do today that is going to feel like I really yeah. live? You know, like, re recently I went jet skiing for the first time. Uh, and that's not something I would have done a few years ago. But, you know, these books are also inspiring me as well to live as boldly as these characters are, are, have been living their lives upon, you know, discovering that they are about to die. So when, when people become a part of the death cast, I, I, I would freak out. I would be going, am I getting that call today? What's going to happen today? What's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What, what, what happens if I don't do something? Yeah, see, I actually think it's like the opposite, you know, like it, it, it's giving because death cast, you know, they will call people, their subscribers within a two hour window. Oh essentially. My God. <laughs> and so if you have not been called at midnight and 2 a.m., which admittedly will be the most stressful part about your day, then, you know, like, OK, I'm not dying today. Like. What can I go do that with, with all my time and all my life and everything and making sure that you're using your life as, as fully as, as possible? You know, you, you'll go skydiving. You'll go tell someone you love them, right? Like, uh, you can get your affairs in order. You, like, you have so much time. Um, so I actually think that, yes, it would be very stressful at first, but it would just you know, start falling in the back of your brain. When you created Orion and Valentino, I mean, first of all, what I love about this is that these are two people that w would have never met if they had not joined up. And, and, and then all of a sudden their story grows together as one. I like friendships like that. I like, I like the way that people explore little, little indiv individual worlds instead of just going to a Facebook page saying, okay, I like you, you're my friend. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm all about, you know, um, I, I believe in love at first sight. I believe that you can meet someone in the most random of ways and they become a lifelong friend. And 
And so being able to explore that, you know, I, I, I kind of sometimes pitch these novels as before sunrise meets black mirror with a queer spin on it, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I think that, you know, that, that hits it right on the head. Wow. You talk about love at first sight. You're speaking my street on that one because I, I divorced my first wife on, on June 21st, 1993. I got married to my current wife on July 11th, 1993, and we've been together for 29 years. I believe in love at first sight, buddy. That is amazing. I That gives me so much hope for, for so many things. And, you know, props to you for just understanding what – you needed more out of life, you know? Um, that's something that I think some of the characters in my novels need often don't discover themselves until they find out they're about to die, right? So uh, I'm glad that you've had like a fuller life uh, because of it. The, the emotional connection that you make on a page transfers out to us as readers. I can't imagine what, what you go through when your fingers are on that keyboard because I, I, as a writer myself, I mean, there are times that I have to stop and, I, and I, I've got to cry a tear. I, I've got to show some emotion and then all of a sudden I'm back into the story again using how it affected me. Yeah, you know, the first time um, I was going to the first draft where they both died at the end, it was the first time that I was, like, sobbing because of something (laughs) that I wrote, you know? I had just reached a critical moment in the novel, and I was just just crying. And it's actually the only time to this day that I really cried because of a scene. I've gotten really emotional. You know, I I speak a lot about 9-11 in this new novel because, again, it really just impacted me. As, as a kid living in New York City when that happened, and then my uncle's passing two months later in a separate plane crash. And, you know, but, like, in revisiting the 9-11 feelings, which I hadn't anticipated on doing when I first began this novel, it just really brought me back to that place of, like, fear and uncertainty yeah. and, uh, and, you know, uh, and yeah, so just getting able to put that back on the page, it, it really it, it drew from my own life. Well, I, I got to thank you for doing that, Adam. And the reason why is because as we celebrated the anniversary just a month or so ago, uh, here's the thing. A lot of people didn't talk about it. And we need stories like this so people are reminded, reminded of what went on that day. Yeah, no. And I, I mean, I was walking through Ground Zero yesterday, actually. And, uh, and it's the first time that I've been there in, a, in, a, in quite a while. And, you know, I wanted to take that that time, especially knowing its, its connection to the novel and my own history with it. And it was, it was really, really emotional seeing the survivor tree, seeing, you know, the, the pools where the buildings yes. once stood, uh, you know. We, we can't forget it. Absolutely. Adam, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I'd love that. Thank you so much for having me this time, and I will definitely be back. Absolutely, and thank you for your writing, too, because your writing touches people's lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) You Be brilliant today, sir. You as well.